All right, welcome back, everyone. Let's take a look at the junctional rhythms. So the junctional rhythms that we're going to look at are the is the, the base junctional rhythm. And we'll also mention what a junctional escape rhythm is as well. Um, we'll talk about junctional bradycardia. We'll talk about accelerated junctional rhythm. And then we'll talk about something that's not a rhythm, but something that's superimposed in a rhythm. And that's the premature junctional complex. All right, so let's explore some of these guys. I just want you to appreciate that so far we've looked at the sinus rhythms and we've looked at the atrial rhythms. These were the ones that either originated in the sinus node or in atrial tissue. Now what we're going to look at are the rhythms that are uh, generated or that originate at the level of the AV junction. And that's this guy here. It's this tissue that kind of surrounds the AV node. Remember the AV node in and of itself has no pacemaking capability whatsoever. And in fact, the only thing it is, is a delay mechanism to allow the depolarization that's received or the, the stimulus that's received from atrial tissue to be, uh, to be delayed a little bit so that the ventricles can completely fill with blood before they fire. So the AV node itself is a delay mechanism and the junctional rhythms that we're going to be looking at are rhythms that originate from the AV junction. All right, so let's take a look at junctional rhythm. All right, as with everything else, there are five steps that we're going to use to uh, determine and to interpret this rhythm. All right, so the junctional rhythm is characterized by a rate that's less than 60 beats per minute. Junctional rhythm is going to be extremely, ex extremely regular. And junctional rhythms, one of two things will happen with the P wave. They'll either be absent, so no P wave, or P wave is going to be inverted. All right, so an inverted P wave, an upside down P wave, may precede the QRS complex. The PR interval, if there's an absence of P waves, is not going to be measurable. And if, in fact, there is a P wave and it happens to be inverted prior to the QRS complex, the PR interval tends to be short. So we'll say it's going to be less than 120 milliseconds. So that should make sense. Remember that if the AV junction is here, that if we are depolarizing the tissue from right here instead of all the way up here at the SA node, the amount of time that it takes to travel here is going to be less than if it were coming from the SA node. So the P wave itself is probably going to look a little bit shorter, and it's also going to have less time that is needed for the travel time, and therefore the PR uh, duration tends to be on the shorter side of things. Now, the QRS duration kind of does the opposite. Remember that as you move down into the heart, so as you start at the SA node, QRS is narrow. Right? As you start moving down into the heart more, as you get to the AV level, it's not wide, but it's on the wider end of normal. So it might be like around the 120 millisecond mark. And then as you move even deeper into the ventricular tissue, this is where you exceed 120 milliseconds. So this is kind of a rough number. You'll see these things right around 100, 120 milliseconds. So I'm going to put around, I don't know why the pen keeps doing that, sorry, uh, around 120 milliseconds. All right, cool. So let's take a look at junctional rhythm here. Junctional rhythm, if you look, you're going to see the very first thing is that it is slow. All right, so if we were to uh, count this, we're going to be at... 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, we're right around the like 55-ish mark, all right? So in this particular case, this one's about 55 beats per minute, all right? That's the rate. Now, if we go to look for P waves where we normally find P waves, well, we don't notice any. There's just nothing here, all right? We're going to look, and we can look as far back as we want. There are simply no P waves that occur here. So that's great because absence of P waves tells us about junctional rhythm. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to find the beginning of our QRS complex to the end of our QRS complex. And in this case, this one's going to be, let's see here, we're going to say about one, almost one box here, another box here, and a little bit more. Let's call this about 100 milliseconds. All right. So it's not short per se, it's normal, but it's on the upper end of normal. It's not 40 or 80 or 60 like we've been seeing a lot with the other rhythms. All right, so 100 milliseconds for the QRS duration. And I think that does it for us. So the absence of P waves, it's a slow rate, no P waves, a, on the wider side, uh, QRS complex, wider end of normal, this defines junctional rhythm. 
All right, so I want to talk for just a moment about a junctional escape rhythm. And junctional escape rhythm is kind of this term we can use. We don't do anything different for the rhythm. But if we notice that the patient no longer has a functioning SA node, and this rhythm yields or results as a, as a, as a matter of the SA node not working, we call that a junctional escape rhythm. So that is to say, if we have an SA driven, a sinus driven rhythm, we know that the rate is about 60 to 100 as a standard. And the AV junction fires somewhere to 40, uh, around the 40 to 60 beats per minute range. And so you don't ever want to have two primary pacemaking sites or two sites that are capable of pacemaking to ever be in competition with one another in terms of the rate. And so the only time that the AV node will assume the primary pacemaking capability is when one of two things happen. Either the SA node drops below the level of 60, or the SA node ceases to function altogether. And again, that means that there's a drop of rate coming from the atrial tissue to the AV node, less than 60 beats per minute. And if that's the case, then the AV node, the AV, AV junction takes over and we get a junctional escape rhythm. So we'll talk more about that in class. This is kind of just something silly to differentiate, so to speak, but the rhythm interpretation doesn't change. So we can't differentiate a junctional from a junctional escape rhythm without knowing a little bit more other than just in isolation, this one little piece of rhythm strip. All right, so as with anything that we've done with the rhythm so far, the junctional rhythm is the base rhythm. So when we look at junctional bradycardia, the only thing that's going to differentiate junctional rhythm from junctional bradycardia is the rate. So regularity, it's still going to be very regular. This is either going to be absent or inverted. PR duration is going to be on the shorter end. QRS duration tends to be on the upper end of normal, so 100 to 120 milliseconds, all right, roughly. And then when we look at this, we're also going to say, well, the only difference then is the rate. So here, when the rate falls below 40 per minute, then we have junctional bradycardia. So if we look here, you'll find that there are no P waves preceding the QRS complex. All right, so that's good. That's a check for this guy. You'll notice that there's no PR duration since we can't uh, measure that since there's no P wave. You'll notice that the QRS, the duration between R waves, is extremely regular. And you'll notice here, I believe the rate's about, uh, let's see, 300, 150, 175, 60, 50, 47, 43, 37, right around, like, let's call it 33 per minute. So that, again, satisfies this requirement. And the QRS duration here is just around 100 or 110 milliseconds. So junctional bradycardia, only differentiating piece between junctional rhythm and junctional bradycardia is the rate less than 40. That's it. All right, everything else stays the same. All right, let's take a look at accelerated junctional rhythm. As you can imagine, accelerated junctional, the only difference between accelerated junctional and a junctional rhythm is again, the rate. Right, everything else stays the same. It's gonna be regular, P's are inverted or absent. It's gonna be no PR or on the shorter end. QRS duration tends to be on the high end. So this is gonna be like 100 to 120 milliseconds. And again, I'll put this approximate sign because nothing's perfect here. And the only difference then is that the rate is going to be in excess of 60 per minute. All right, so let's take a look at our EKG. No P waves anywhere. We don't see any P waves where they're supposed to be here. All right, that's good. So that satisfies this requirement. It is extremely regular. If you map this out, it maps out perfect. So that takes care of that requirement. If there's no P wave, there's no PR duration. Now I'll draw your attention here. This QRS complex is kind of hard to see where it ends in the beginning of the ST segment is. So I would probably start my calculation. I'm just going to use this line right here. All right? And I would probably end my QRS complex right where it returns to the baseline. And we'll talk about that in class. That's just a little trick because we really don't know where it ends in here. So it seems reasonable that where this baseline is, where these two intersect, would be a good place for us to, uh, to end. So we're going to be at about one, two... Here we're right around the 120 millisecond mark. All right. So if we take a look at this here, we're going to be, the rate is above 60. If we measure this, it's going to be 300, 150, 175. Here's 60, so it's right around the 70-ish mark. All right. And everything else stays the same. So rate, 
greater than 60 per minute defines accelerated junctional rhythm. Now, the question you should be asking yourself is how do I differentiate accelerated junctional rhythm from, for example, a sinus rhythm? Answer, what do you think? Well, if you said rate, you're not correct, right? Because sinus rhythm is 60 to 100. So, so is this one. This one can be above 60 and go as high as 70, 80, 90. So the only difference here is going to be the absence of P's or inverted P waves. For the junctionals in sinus rhythm, the P wave will be upright and it will precede the QRS complex. And the PR interval in sinus rhythm will be normal, whereas in junctional rhythm, it'll either be absent or it will be short. All right, so that's pretty much it for accelerated junctional. So we need to talk about one more thing that shows up here, and this is not a rhythm. This is, again, a thing that superimposes itself on top of the rhythm, and that's this guy that shows up here. All right, so these guys, if you notice them, you'll notice there are grouped beats, right? You see one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So there are these group beats that are taking place, and these group beats are kind of unique. Now, if you remember from before, we talked about premature atrial complexes, and atrial complexes had an upright P wave followed by a QRS complex, and everything looked pretty normal. But this atrial activity came early in the sequence. Well, guess what? For the premature junctional complexes, it's going to be exactly the same thing, except that just like all of the other junctional rhythms, the P wave in a PJC is either going to be inverted, followed by a narrow QRS, or it could be the complete absence of a P wave, followed by a normal QRS that comes early in the sequence. So if you look here, the distance, wow, this one shows up early. All right, so this guy is early, and if you look at it, there's an inverted P wave here. This tells us about a junction origin. Same thing with this guy, same thing with this guy. So premature junctional complexes are beats within an underlying rhythm. The underlying rhythm here is probably sinus rhythm, all right, or it might be sinus dysrhythmia. And inside that rhythm, or superimposed on top of that rhythm, you now get this inverted P wave followed by a normal duration QRS that comes early in the sequence that defines premature junctional complex. All right, so that's it for the junctionals. We'll keep these short and sweet, and we'll see you in the next video.